The report that's being launched today is called Between State and Market uh, and looks at how protection gap entities address catastrophic risk, which is growing in the world. We've been studying 13 of these organisations all around the world and they are entities that have come together to marry market solutions to socio-political problems like devastation after flood, devastation after earthquake. What we're looking at is what are the entities that have been set up that have released global capital in the aftermath of disaster to help people get back on their feet and rebuild. Risk is growing in the world, catastrophic risk. Obviously natural disaster catastrophic risk because of climate change, because of growing urbanisation. We have more people in areas that are simply more prone to severe and frequent disaster. It's not just those disasters, we've got other things happening. We've got an increase in terrorist risk, terrorism attacks. We've got the threat increasingly of cyber attacks on us. And of course, pandemic. We saw that with things like Ebola, but increasingly the risk of pandemic. 2017 alone, natural disaster was 330 billion. But it's not just the economic cost. Along with that, we have enormous personal cost, social cost, potential political instability. And if we have some kind of capital mechanism, we have a chance of offering people the ability to rebuild lives and communities in ways that will also help to settle social inequality and manage some political consistencies. And so we need to think of the economic as deeply tied to the other types of things that we can do to keep society resilient. We wanted to create this study, we wanted to do this study and create a report about it because the protection gap, this gap between economic loss and insured loss, which is growing every year, is a huge problem. And we felt that's too big a problem on its own. Why don't we actually look at the things that have already been set up in a lot of local contexts, organisations that we call protection gap entities, and understand what is it that they already do. If something has already been developed that brings together market actors, brings together politicians, aid organisations, uh, development banks and so forth, if those things have already been developed, if they're already doing some job around some specific local protection gap, should we not first learn from them and understand what worked, what didn't work? How can we further leverage and exploit what we already know to deal with a growing problem for society. Studying these entities, these protection gap entities, has been very important for understanding that they largely are able to address the problems for which they are established. So they do do the job for which they were set up. But they do it in very particular ways around the remit for which they were set up. And one of the things that we're showing is, A, how they can do it. They can remove risk and transfer it to global markets. They can redistribute risk across an entire society, but in doing so, they will also have unintended consequences. Consequences on the market, consequences on social equality, and also consequences on the actual gaps and how terrorism or flood or some other aspect of risk evolves. And so we want to show both what works, what are the good things, but also what are the things you need to watch out for, the challenges, because we could design these things better and we could learn as we expand their scope to make better use of them. Once you set up a mechanism, people think that the mechanism that they've set up will deal with the problems. And so stakeholders don't understand that the gap itself or the, the, the threat in the natural environment involves. Climate change is accelerating it rapidly. And they also don't understand that it was set up with very particular conditions. And so they may think, oh, well, we've got something to deal with that. We don't have to worry about it anymore. And so it can actually have a counter effect distract attention from the things we should be doing, now we have a financial backup to make sure that we also prevent these risks from occurring. There were some surprising things about our findings. We sometimes found that these organisations, these protection gap entities had been set up with such restricted remit that they actually made the problem worse. For example, in California, a state that we know is prone to earthquake, there is only 11% penetration of earthquake insurance by the, by the actual entity set up. Through no fault of the entity itself, which has, to the best of its disabilities, discharged its role. In California, they will come in and provide you free of charge certain types of rebuilding to stop your house falling down after an earthquake. But it's very hard to get people to actually take control of their own destiny and use these mechanisms. 
So we understood that people need to know more about what these things can do. And we hope that this report is going to be one little piece in that bigger jigsaw puzzle of letting people know what we can do to help them to help themselves. When you want to study something, that's a global phenomenon. I mean, the protection gap is a global phenomenon. We're all touched by that. There is no country, and indeed I would say very few individuals, for whom this is not a problem. Even if you can afford to protect yourself, it is not helpful to you if your neighbour is unprotected because of the inequalities and disparities that will ultimately bite us all. So in that sense, you're dealing with a global phenomenon, but you can't deal with a global phenomenon globally. You have to start with local problems. What are people actually facing in dealing with flood repeatedly in the UK? We know that the Seine has burst its banks. You know, it's had record levels of flooding two years in a row. You know, Paris under threat. We need to think about these things as local problems and then drill into what are people doing in local situations and then draw themes that say, how does that connect to global capital? How does that connect to, indeed, global socio-political movements about how we want to think at risk in society. Thank you.